The Sopranos is a show praised for its groundbreaking realism in its characters and portrayal of life in America. Well, at least until that episode where Tony ate a piece of celery. We all know that's science fiction. But at times the show also goes beyond the realm of normalcy and features a number of what might be considered supernatural elements. That was a paranormal event. What the fuck are you talking about? Now, these moments are heavily debated by fans if they're actually supernatural or not. After all, most can be explained away. But these moments do provide an interesting insight into not only the psychology of the characters experiencing them, but also the people who wrote them. So, in this video, I thought I would go through each of these moments and see what we can extract from them. Now, I'm not going to be covering the dream sequences in this video. One, because they can be explained as just being dreams, and two, because I already covered Tony's coma dream in another video. I will probably get to the rest of the dreams eventually, but for now, let's focus on the other moments. The first incident I'd like to examine is in Season 3, when Tony sees Pussy's image in a mirror. Pussy was one of Tony's best friends since they were young, and a key member of his crew. However, when they learned that he was an informant for the FBI, they have to whack him and dump his body into the ocean at the end of Season 2. Pussy's ghost, as the fans refer to him, is of course a shocking image. It appears out of nowhere, in a moment that otherwise wouldn't seem tense. But it could just be a manifestation of Tony's guilt. Pussy was one of his best friends after all, so the fact that he had to kill him would obviously weigh heavily on his conscience. I'm sorry, I know you like him. Like him? I fucking love him. This is further reinforced by the fact that the reason Tony even realized Pussy was a rat was because of his dreams. Tony's subconscious was responsible for Pussy's death, and continues to think about him even after the act. Especially this episode, in which he was also dealing with his mother Livia's death. So, while it's fun to imagine Pussy's ghost out there, we'll leave that for the Sopranos video game. Getting whacked? <laughs> I remember what that's like, shit city. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, speaking of Livia, in this episode, AJ hears a noise when he's alone at the house. He thinks it might be Livia, but just like before, there's no evidence for this being a ghost. He was reading a poem about death just before this, so it makes sense that he might hear a normal creaking of the house and think of his dead grandmother. Another moment people think is a ghost is in the episode Calling All Cars. After Bobby's wife Karen dies in a car accident, Janice tries to squeeze her way into his life so that he'll marry her. In doing so, she tries to get him to remove any reminder of Karen so she can take over. This culminates in Bobby and Janice eating the last Z that Karen ever cooked, symbolically representing Bobby moving on from her. In this scene of them at dinner, you can see the wine glass appear to move on its own. Some people think that this is Karen's ghost come back to try and stop Janice. In this episode, her children had been trying to contact her through a Ouija board after all, so maybe AJ wasn't full of shit, and they managed to somehow summon her from the dead. However, it's most likely that Janice was simply moving the table mat with her hand off screen, and that's what caused the glass to move. You can see her adjust her plate to eat the ziti, which makes more sense given that this is such a small little thing. After all, if it was Karen's ghost, wouldn't she do something like tip the glass over onto Janice? Another potentially supernatural moment is when Pauly sees the Virgin Mary at the Bing in Season 6. The figure comes out of nowhere with a loud musical sting, which makes it very startling. This moment has a profound impact on Pauly, causing him to reunite with his mother and making him hesitant to take over the April crew in the final episode. One time at the Bing... I was alone to meet Eddie Lind. I saw the Virgin Mary. But again, since Pauly is the only one who sees her, it may just be a figment of his imagination. After all, in the episode, he's dealing not only with a possible cancer diagnosis, but also the guilt of putting innocent children in danger with his cheap rides at the festival. 
His Catholic guilt may be why he sees the Virgin Mary, and the fact that he goes to his mother at the end of the episode for comfort suggests that it's just a psychological problem. But there also might be a deeper meaning to this scene. There's another scene similar to this in Season 4. After killing Ralph, Tony and Chris go to the place to clean up and sleep. When Tony awakens, he's alone. He sees a picture of Tracy, the stripper Ralph killed, and then walks out. The scene draws attention to the empty stage, the same place Polly saw the Virgin Mary when he was alone. Some fans think that this scene shows that Polly was somehow blessed and Tony wasn't, which is why Polly survives while Tony is presumably shot in the final episode. But it might also just be symbolic of Polly's superstition and Tony's lack of faith. I'm not saying there's nothing out there, Polly. But to not live your life? What the fuck are you gonna do? And speaking of Polly, the most well known supernatural moment of the show is when Polly goes to visit a psychic. After Christopher's cryptic warning from the afterlife, Polly begins to think he's cursed. His girlfriend convinces him to go see a psychic she went to before. Polly attends this psychic's meeting with a bunch of other people. At first, he doesn't believe in the guy's bullshit. However, after the psychic seems to be able to see people Polly has whacked, he flips out. Fucking quiz! <laughs> One of the reasons people think this scene is legitimately supernatural is the fact that the psychic knows things he shouldn't be able to, such as Polly's first hit, Sonny Pagano, and the fact that Polly got poison ivy. This seems to suggest that he's actually communicating with the people Polly has killed, like Mikey Palmese. There's no denying it. I'm dragging a bunch of fucking ghouls around with me, and Mikey's their fucking ringleader. However, there are several clues that the psychic is just using cold reading, a technique that fake psychics use to seem like they have supernatural abilities. Stop it! I didn't do anything! You know Peter was dead! I didn't start by saying Peter is dead. I started by saying they want me to acknowledge Peter. That could have meant Peter was in the audience, or that Peter was somebody's friend, or Peter had died. I couldn't be wrong, see? The psychic starts out by throwing out the name Charles and asking about a son. When Polly offers up that he doesn't have kids, the psychic then changes it to Sonny. Polly himself then offers up the name Pagano, which the psychic then connects with his previous statements. Even when Polly's girlfriend is describing her experience with the psychic, she says that at first, he was talking about a guy named Johnny, which wasn't anyone she knew. She herself then connected the dots for him and offered up the name Ronnie, an obvious hint that the psychic is a phony. It's clear from Polly's appearance and attitude that he's a mobster, so it wouldn't be hard for the psychic to predict that this guy had hurt people in the past. The only detail that's a little harder to explain is the poison ivy, but perhaps Polly still bears some markings from it. After all, in the last episode of season 1, he has powder on his face to treat the rash, so he could still have some sign. Either way though, I think it's fair to say that while this incident definitely freaked Polly out, it can be explained without the supernatural. You're too susceptible to the psychics and the dream messages and dirty fucking toilet seats. Now, I know I've spent the entire video showing how these moments can be explained away without anything magical about them. But I do think that David Chase and the writers were trying to say something about spirituality. David has said in interviews that spirituality interested him, just as much as it's clear from the therapy scenes that psychology interested him as well. I think these scenes are meant to make us not only think of whatever might be waiting for us on the other side, but more so on how the characters who are experiencing them react to these moments. The fear of death or divine punishment making some of them better people and some of them worse. But at its core, the focus is always on the characters themselves, not an abstract spiritual concept. That's the guy, Adriana. My Uncle Tony. The guy I'm going to hell for. While we're here, I should also mention 3 o'clock. After Christopher is shot, he experiences a vision of hell while he's clinically dead. There he sees dead mobsters, including his father and Mikey Palmese, who give him a message for Tony and Paulie. 
Yeah, he said, uh, tell Tony and Paulie, three o'clock. As I mentioned in my review of the final episode, many fans believe Tony is killed in the last scene. And if he's shot by the members only guy, the angle would be at his three o'clock. There's some great dramatic irony here. The characters are worried about a time when the warning is actually a physical direction. Now, I don't have an outright explanation for this. There's no definitive answer as to whether the 3 o'clock warning was legitimate or just a coincidence. However, The Many Saints of Newark does definitively show that hell is a real place and Christopher is there. He narrates the movie from hell. That's the guy. My Uncle Tony. The guy I went to hell for. But that's just another reason why I dislike the film. It removes any ambiguity when it comes to the supernatural. The show is always careful to give possible explanations to all of its supernatural moments. It was up to the viewer to decide for themselves what the meaning of the scenes were, and whether or not you believed it was supernatural is a reflection of your own beliefs about the afterlife. So, in that spirit, I choose to ignore the continuity of the movie. To me, it's like a ghost. It may be out there haunting my dreams, but if I pull my covers over my head and pretend it doesn't exist, then it can't hurt me. Right? Oh, come on. Cindy, the news is on. Another little white girl done fell down the well. 50 black people get their ass beat by police today, but the whole world got to stop for one little whitey down the hole. Let's ask the Ouija board if you should subscribe. What do you mean, no? Russell, Sean, Heart of Markness, Logan, Clean, John Reyna, Jesse Sterling, Andrew Stewart, Ops Grazing Media, Daz J Kid, Conan Higgins, Sam Cedarlin, Don Lucania, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, and Brad Smith Studios.